This is the new new. Our digital innovation podcast brought to you by Henkel Digital Business. Join us as we discuss digitalization with innovators from inside the company, startups, and partners around the world. In our current series, we focus on virtual work life and explore how different members of our community are responding to today's digital reality. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the new new for those who have been tuning in to our episodes regarding virtual working and a happy welcome to those who might have this as their first episode and first exposure point to us here on this podcast. So here at the new new, we are continuing our exploration of how different members of the extended Henkel community are contending with virtual working. And with me today is Julius from Pacemakers. Thank you for joining us, Julius. Hi, thank you very much for having us. Absolutely. And so before we even go into our discussion and really running the revenue, mm-hmm. what, it, what it's like for you as an individual and for your business to be going yeah. through this virtual working um, methodology, MO, however you want to describe it, um, I just want to give you a quick shot, an opportunity to tell our listeners today what Pacemakers does, your mission, vision, and really just how we partner with you as, as an organization. All right. Yeah. Thank you again for having uh, having me today. It's a real honor to do this podcast together with you. So um, what Pacemakers is about. So we are a team of three founders um, who have all been working not only at Rocket Internet, so, so incubating own startups, um, especially in the D2C world with very much of a platform focus for um, consumer and um, healthcare products. But we have been um, also in different consultancy backgrounds and um, all three of us worked in uh, the company lead, company building lead team from Accenture. And from this, we have been forming our now called uh, Pacemakers Digital Ventures. So we are a venture builder focused on developing new business models basically so developing new products and services and basically doing this with a very much proven methodology that we've been developing not only in our consultancy times but especially also during our startups times at rockets and uh, also uh, in our uh, developing our own startups so this methodology has been applied uh, broadly now (laughs) and also with henkel and um, for Henkel, we are um, especially working with the team from Henkel X together and doing uh, a lot of ideation workshops, so ideating around new business models and also helping with the validation. So is it valid and validating them with Henkel's customers? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, new business models, that's definitively the call to action, especially in this era where all businesses, Henkel, and even outside of our industry are being called upon to really look at our operational models and look at how we're conducting business, especially in the light of digital and in the light of virtual. Um, yeah. we'll definitely get into Absolutely. that a bit. Uh, but just as a very stark tradition here at the new new, I do like to ask folks who come on to the show, <laughs> given that we're virtually working in mass, you know, whether you report into Henkel or you're one of our trusted partners, such as yourself, uh, you yeah. might be reporting into a different physical location to do your virtual work uh, rather than the in-office setup that's typical. So with that said, when you were working at home, was there a, a totem of sorts or a physical object that since has become your new favorite thing, your favorite go-to? <laughs> yeah, I have to say, so uh, we all, we are back to our little office in a sort of shift routine. So we are not basically seeing each other. So I'm here alone, but um, generally I'm back to the office, so I can't show you something from home. But when I worked from home, my favorite object definitely was my coffee machine that I smoked. <laughs> <with cleanliness. laughs> that's a popular, that's a really popular answer. Oh, I and thought I would so. Say a universal <laughs> Boring one. Because, one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And I mean, even whether I'm at home or in the office, the coffee maker is always the go to. Exactly. Exactly. I think, you know, in, in, a, in a world of constant change, there are yeah. some 
very sacred things. That that's it. That's it. A complete <laughs> non-digital endeavor. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Sometimes the analog is good. Like yes, you exactly. Replicate the feeling of having that first sip of coffee in the morning. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Great. Well, you know, given that you are back in the office now, um, I think it's still worthwhile to ask how someone, you know, within your space who is very used to virtual working, yeah. and the digital agenda, how did your home office uh, set up look like? How was that optimized for virtual working? Um, um, I bought myself a screen, actually. There was a, um, a one of the investments to accommodate for the home working. And other than that, I mean, I obviously, as, as most of us, have been faking some routines like going to the office. Instead of going to the office, you just went outside, grabbed a coffee and walked through the circle or something like that. Right. So um, making up some routines and probably even also staying in only one room and not wandering around your flat <laughs> to not get distracted too much. <laughs> uh, I think it's much easier for me having no children yet. But for people with children, we had funny calls already. I think you've experienced <laughs> the same. Like a lot of children came in and like <laughs> screaming and yelling. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it's kind of fun, right? Um, Absolutely. To some colleagues' personal some private glimpses into yeah, their... whether intentional or, or not. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. So, I guess back to you know, and expanding from yourself as an individual and looking um, bigger picture at your business mm -hmm. at pacemakers. Yeah. So, how has this mandate for and mass virtual working we're seeing? you know, not just within our country, not just within Germany, but the world at large, yeah. in an unprecedented time. How has virtual working impacted your business? Mm. Yeah, I mean, um, in the beginning, we had these questions like everybody else. Being a young company, I think for us, it was even stronger um, that we had to ask ourselves what's happening here and will we survive this as a young company? having um, almost 10 employees and um, not a too stable payroll. We were, of course, like a little bit scared of the fluctuations that our clients also are affected with. And uh, we also had to ask our clients, how are you affected? How can we help you translating uh, short-term concepts, short-term visions towards accommodating to this new situation? And what we found is basically that, I mean, to be honest, business building and venture building was the best idea that we had even before yeah. COVID, but now it's even more relevant because rapid ideation, rapid validation and getting to an MVP very fast is yeah. even uh, more important in these strange times where you can only um, yeah, drive on inside, basically, auf Sicht fahren, you say in German. <laughs> so that's uh, pretty helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I mean, we had to structure all of our processes to remote work. So also meaning that we had to structure all of our clients' work into the remote work. But we found that most of the processes and most of the structures were even working better in a remote work. So, uh, like, especially our clients are working more focused now because you don't have too many distractions from left and right. And people are asking you, can you do this more? And can you do that? And can you come after lunch? You get uh, come home with a bucket list of to do's from your um, from your boss or something. That's right. that's something that's been left out now, which has been more advantageous to us, to be honest. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, you know, just in terms of, of the of the product slash service offering that you provide as an organization um, in times of such high ambiguity and guesswork. Exactly. Frankly, that's the that's the environment we, we exist and we play in at the moment. Yeah. You offer an invaluable service. Yeah. So that's great. And I mean, in, in offering that invaluable service, obviously, there is the the topic of communication. So in order to really provide the service that we're, we're talking about, that's so invaluable, mm -hmm. you have to continue talking to your clientele and building business. So with an in light mm -hmm. of virtual working, how do you keep up that communication channel with your clients and also, you know, source for prospective clients? Um, I mean, sourcing for prospective clients is very hard 
And that's the, the first the first answer, because especially the first contacts are evident to be impersonal, because in the end, everything we do, you are doing me is a people's business and it's still a people's driven business. And you need to have something if you are commissioning somebody to develop something new for your company, you want to know him and you want to feel him. And so so this prospective client acquisition is very hard. The other thing, the remote working um, with our proven methodology, which is from ideation to validation, there are like given frameworks, there are given things that you do at a given point of time. Everything like this can be done remotely. And you communicate basically with specific tools very well, and you can do your routines and that you have to stick to, of course, but you can do your routines very well with your clients in a remote way. So, I mean, I think in, in terms of this tool discussion, it's pretty important that we are considering that, a like like people say, I've, I've read this, this speech, it's, it was called a tool with a fool, and a fool with a tool is still a fool. And I really <laughs> liked it because, yeah, because in the end, like if you give, too many uh, tools out, then you get pretty crazy and not more productive than than ever. Absolutely, and um, you know, obviously, when it comes to migrating um, such an immense population from, let's call it the more analog way of working, but I, I speak more towards the traditional. Yeah. Everyone is in one collective space. You can hop over to the next office to ask your question if you don't want to just send that email. Yeah. And we're just in such close physical uh, confines, right? Um, but you know, with all the different and excellent tools we have in our in our suite, mm -hmm. um, the tool is still only as good as a user. Exactly. Right? <laughs> that's, that's also <laughs> good. Yeah, it's a good yeah. one as well. So, I mean, We've definitely discussed as an organization, you yeah. know, what are the, what the proper etiquette? How do you optimize the uses of such tool? And it always sources back to the user. It starts with you. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so how do you enable your clients to pursue their goals in the context of corporate venturing? I mean, I, I think in terms of uh, the current situation, we are using we are using virtual workshops. That's, that are pretty good to, to bring in everybody to do, for example, if you are having a joint ideation on a new business model with um, more than five to, between five to 10 people, then it usually helps to bring everybody into this virtual room and work with a tool called, for example, Miro. Miro is a great collaboration tool where you can have basically these uh, and these digital sticky notes everywhere and that you can do while you are ideating fill a full business model canvas and understand your business model so understanding your target groups understand your revenue streams understand your your ideal uh, value proposition that you want to um, answer so this this kind of tool is is probably something that you can very well use for clients interactions and and collaboration then the the other ones that we are using to to keep this communication and momentum going that we would usually have in a personal co-creation mode in one room um is basically is probably zoom or probably microsoft teams where you need to watch out to not have too many people in there and if so, mute them all and have them raise their, their hands if they actually want to say something. So really watching out for that it still keeps being productive and not right. drifting away into unproductivity and people talking back and forth and so on. Right. I mean, it, it's the same thing, right? There is a certain... Um... There's a certain style of etiquette when you're yeah. engaged and involved in in-person meetings. Absolutely. Same for those virtual meetings. That's it. Um, yeah. I mean, you're obviously speaking to something that Peacemakers is really well, right? Being set up with the right mm -hmm. virtual tools and platforms to make sure you're, you're facilitating collaboration. Mm -hmm. But, you know, with that said, there always has to be challenges, right? Especially with virtual being um, a relatively unexploited way of working when we're talking about the collective True. population we're yeah. still all getting adjusted so what are some uh maybe some very notable challenges you've experienced in remote collaboration thus far i mean um probably this way you will have experienced the same that 
especially I'm in sure, cross, <laughs> in cross functional teams right where you have probably um, some subject matter expertise that you desperately need from a supply chain team for example or from a finance team and people um, are probably can you still hear me oh i can hear you perfectly yeah oh, perfect um, and people are probably not used to working um, in in this virtual way because they are just very much uh, yeah anal analog persons um, and right. have been also in their daily life never incorporated digital so you would have been going to them in a personal way so what we usually sure. do with those kinds of people we saw that they don't like these virtual uh, Miro sessions with with sticky notes and so on so what we did is basically for example one thing uh, at a client from another uh, company, a beverage company. We've been writing um, huge hypothesis lists and we've been just doing, putting them in Excel because Excel is what he loves and what he always uh, is used to work with. And he just filled it in and then sent it back. So much more effective and probably not the way we would usually operate, but you have to accommodate to these kinds of different yeah. people that you have in your team. And I kind of love that because you're describing a scenario in which you kind of marry the this virtual component with the analog, right? Exactly. And it's really just about knowing the stakeholders involved in such an effort yeah. and meeting them in the middle. Yeah. Because there are a lot of folks who are still in process of upskilling themselves exactly. to be able to use the yeah. platform. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not the case that we always work like uh, with, with this... Uh, agile, functional, innovative Henkel X teams, for example, but uh, we also desperately need all the knowledge in the in the core uh, corporates, because this is where all the knowledge from from your from your uh, segments are resigning. Yeah? And this is uh, what we need to extract it from. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you're describing two worlds, right? And I, I personally believe that there is a a point of reconciliation and a, an ability to marry the two in a really harmonious way, like what you described. Yeah. But do you have a perspective on whether working in person, let's call it the more traditional, the more analog, um, is more effective than virtual working? Oh, absolutely. Or absolutely. So I think there are two two things where, where you desperately need physical contact, um, especially when doing, um, when iterating on new business models. And the first one is in the very beginning, where because business, developing new business models is always about co-creation. So bringing people from Henkel together with people who are orchestrating the process and who know the methodology, so like us. Right. <laughs> and it's essential to have a physical meeting of these two worlds. And especially even if it's inside of Henkel, if there are cross-functional teams, people don't know each other yet, don't know how they are like behaving and this is something that you can't really replicate in a virtual world it's very hard right. to replicate it's much better. we can't replicate it at the moment so we have to do it yeah. virtually but it's a missing component i don't have an answer how to replicate it at the moment yeah and i think also maybe the the answer is you know the very traditional it depends yeah absolutely <laughs> right? absolutely and I, I would think in the process like you know when you think of the conception of an idea or the ideation yeah stage, right um there might be certain moments in the process where it's a lot more critical and a lot more valuable to meet in person yeah. and have that touch yeah. point and then other things facilitated in a more virtual canvas yeah. format if you yeah will. yeah and and the, and this is the first time i think this is hard to replicate and and the other time is really when you have something developed within your team and you have mm -hmm. you came up with a management proposal how to really push this great business model that you have been iterating if it's been a laundry platform or if it's the a new product that you have for your beauty uh, segment something like that but you really want to get the sign off from the management now to go and scale it and this is also something that's very hard this passion and this this nice uh, like we've been working on this for 12 weeks and it's been hard and uh, breathtaking and um, yeah. sweat and tears have been spent and you want to really show your management that you've been working hard and get the sign off to continue. And this is something also 
hard to replicate at the moment with the current situation. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think, you know, it's things for us to really mull over and think about even after we exit, you know, the, the immediate situation that's being presented to us by COVID. Mm -hmm. um, so with that said, and maybe to bookend our conversation, uh, is there any additional advice or counsel or guidance that you would give to anyone listening to this episode today who is being confronted with this new reality of virtual working? Mm, I think, I mean, we've been talking briefly about Miro, um, but there are, of course, another, it's a wide area of, of available tools. I think it's essential to pick within your project teams, wherever you are, pick one or two tools that you really use and make full use of, rather than picking a wide area of different tools for different purposes and having a tool avalanche at the more, and then lose yourself in tooling. <laughs> so that's yeah. probably yeah. the first yeah. advice. And, and we had that in some projects where we had too many tools in, for too many things. And we just got lost there with, yeah. with the too many tools. <laughs> yeah. And then you're, then you're spending your time up yeah. yourself on a suite of exactly. resources actually doing <laughs> Exactly. And then, well, then, then probably have informal exchanges, even though it's not very much possible too much but try if you're in the same city for example i had a colleague from you guys uh, sitting in berlin as well from henke x and we took a walk together so had an informal exchange uh, about ongoing projects and these kinds of things and it really helps this these kinds of uh, interactions and exchanges um if you don't have the same city then probably do something uh, via Zoom or via Teams, like do an informal exchange coffee during the day and just take a break and talk to a colleague or a, a project member. I think that helps. Yeah. And and yeah, and and be very very strict with the routines. I think in the end, like otherwise one is lost in too many calls and alignments and um, then there's another tool and so on. So I think if you stick to a clear routine with, with outcome based day planning, so I want to clearly structure my day around X, Y, Z, then that also helps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I think there are things that we carry on into this, uh, this brave new yeah, world. It's a brave new that. world. It's a great book, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Love Huxley. <laughs> um, no, and it's great. I think there's certain things that we already intrinsically know um, from our previous experience that are still applicable in this new world. And that's, I think that's very encouraging for people to know that they don't have to completely overhaul themselves. Yeah, absolutely. There's new things to, to learn, obviously, but other things like keeping a routine, yeah. making time to socialize, network, and to foster really valuable and really meaningful relationships that doesn't go away with virtual absolutely. working in fact it might even more absolutely so. absolutely correct and with that said i want to thank you for engaging with me fostering this relationship yeah, exactly. thank you very much <laughs> and joining us here it the still worked very well remotely i have to say right absolutely yeah. this is just <laughs> this is a product of that very I experience will... so thank you for coming on representing pacemakers thank you, and thank you very you. much bye bye <laughs>